So this is a video I never thought I was gonna have to make, but unfortunately it's been a tough morning here on the farm and I feel like I need to tell you guys what happened. So far the training of our livestock guardian puppy, Abby, has been going really, really well. She's got a great personality, she's been learning her obedience commands really well, and she's starting to get very comfortable with the ducks, chickens, and geese. She definitely has that puppy instinct to chase them, but I've been very watchful of her and I've been correcting it. And I think some of the birds, like the geese, actually keep her from trying to overstep her bounds. And all in all, for a puppy, she is progressing phenomenally. Yes, you are, little girl. Yes, you are. Which is why the next thing I'm gonna tell you, it sort of breaks my heart. So I have preached on and on to you guys about kind of like the number one rule that I find for training livestock guardian puppies. And that is to never let them alone with your birds until you know you can absolutely trust them 100%. As you guys know, Abby has her own little special puppy area that I can keep her around the birds and around the farm, but also lock her up and keep her away from having direct access to the birds when I can't be there to supervise. And so when I'm out doing my morning chores, I have Abby with me. I'm using it as an opportunity to teach and train her. We'll even end up doing some obedience commands and that sort of thing. But then if I have to go inside and do work inside or go off farm run some errands or do something like that and I'm not actually out in the barnyard, I'll lock her up in that secure puppy area and that will keep her from getting into trouble. But then if like around lunchtime I decide to come outside to shoot a video or hang out, I let her back out again and she's with me. But then I might lock her up again and then later what I'll end up doing is bringing her back out when I come to do the evening chores and then after I feed her and Toby for their evening chores typically what I'm doing now is I just actually let her go loose and run free all the birds are locked up so they are protected from Abby I've got Toby dog to supervise Abby and keep her from getting in any trouble or an animal that might be too much for her to handle comes into the yard keep her protected and speaking of the yard I mean we have about 10 acres here fenced in with a five foot high perimeter fence plus another half foot of electrical top wire here so I'm really not all that concerned about anybody getting in, nor am I all that concerned about Abby getting out. Plus the Maremma as a dog breed is very much nocturnal. And so to be able to have access to the outdoor world and let them roam and run free at night is really good for her because it lets her work off some of that puppy energy. And she and Toby Dog can run around and bark and chase away coyotes and do the thing that they're meant to do. And then when I come back out the next morning, the cycle repeats itself and I'm back out here with Abby doing chores and then I'll lock her up for a few hours and it's a pretty good cycle where I would say that she's spending probably about 18 hours a day roaming free around this farm but then she's maybe locked up in her area about a six hours or so and that's a rough estimate some days it's more some days it's less but the truth of the matter is she's spending more of her time free than locked up it's a little different than I did it with Toby because Toby when he was a puppy he spent more time locked up because I didn't have this perimeter fence at the time and so I didn't want him running free. If we didn't even have that fence, I wouldn't be all that worried about Toby running too loose and free. He's such a good dog and so well behaved and so connected to this farm. I actually doubt he would even wander much further past our property line. This one, on the other hand, I'm not so sure about yet. She's still learning her way. And what I'm about to tell you next is gonna really show you that she's learning her way. And for those not familiar with our farm, here's that area that I keep Abby locked up in during the day. Here's our duck house where all of our ducks and a few chickens live. That's our brooder house where we raise baby birds, where we don't have anybody hatched just yet, but we will very soon. Over here is where our silky and bantam chickens live. And then this giant hoop coop is where our geese live and spend their nights, as well as most of our chickens end up living as well. The chickens often spend most of their time in here, or at least most of the chickens do. It's so much warmer in here. They're protected from the elements and I give them water and I give them food. Now, when I say most of our chickens stay inside, I need to stress the word most, because as you can see here, some of the chickens like to get loose and they like to wander around. 
And during the daytime, that is totally fine for them to do. And then at nighttime, as the sun sets, what happens is all the ducks will put themselves to bed in their house, and all the geese will actually march themselves into bed into their house. And the chickens end up finding their way back home to wherever they live, usually. But every so often, I will have a chicken that will not put themselves to bed, and they will find a creative place to roost for the night. You know, I've caught chickens trying to roost in the cat condo in the dog area. Other times they've tried to move into this chicken tractor. And sometimes I've even seen them roosting over by the trash in the water. Which is why every night when I go to bed, I usually just do a quick sweep of the barnyard to make sure there's no chickens running loose or free. And so this next part that I'm about to tell you guys is feeling downright tragic to me because last night, Blanche the chicken, which if you guys don't know Blanche, Blanche the chicken, she is actually one of the oldest chickens that we have here on the farm. You know, we had a first generation of like self-hatched Americana chickens. Most of those chickens died except for one, Margie the murder chicken. And so what happened was some friends of ours over at the Fredstead said, hey, you only have this one chicken. We have these two leghorn chickens we'd like to offer you. I guess it was the spring of 2020, which feels like forever ago. My friends from the Fredstead came over to the farm and gave us these two chickens, Blanche and Blanche's sister, Dottie. Actually, you can see Dottie right here. She just walked back into the duck house. They all joined the farm and became the foundation for our next generation of chickens. Well, anyway, Blanche has been a great chicken here on the farm, but sometimes she's a little mischievous. And last night, she decided to not go back into the hoop coop. And she also decided to not go back into her duck house. And she took refuge somewhere on the farm. I don't exactly even know where, but she didn't go back into any of the secure locations. And when I came out, to do the morning chores this morning. I found Blanche in a pile of white feathers. She wasn't entirely dead, but she was on the verge of it. So I actually put her down to end her suffering. And I gotta admit, I feel really awful about all of this. And if there's any question about which dog it is, let me just clarify that. Toby Dog has never had any incident whatsoever with the bird after you know two and a half years almost two and a half years abby is the brand new puppy Eve actually still looks very upset at abby abby has been looking guilty all morning pretty much certain that it was abby not to say that it was abby's fault though because if i think about whose fault it is it's 100 percent my fault you know back to that advice that i always give people when raising guard dogs with birds and how you should do it. You know, that number one rule is don't leave your dog unsupervised until you can trust them. And while I didn't do it intentionally, it was definitely an accident that led to Abby being unsupervised out here in the yard with access to one of our birds and things went horrible. And I know you feel horrible, Abby. And this is all my fault, so I'm sorry to you. I'm also really sorry to Blanche. If I had taken more care to make sure she was locked up, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong to let Abby run free at this young an age, it's all my fault. So in the winter time, when I can't get to the spot that I usually leave uh, dead animal carcasses, I actually have another spot here. It's over in the back corner of our property. Now you guys are probably wondering, what would I do with a dead chicken like Blanche? You know, would I feed it to the dogs? And potentially I could, but I don't know, that would feel like it's rewarding bad behavior. I could salvage most of the meat for myself and then my wife, and we could eat it ourselves and use that as a way to honor her life. But again, I feel like that's rewarding bad behavior. Me as the farmer did not do a good job here. And so for me to try to claim the body as a resource for myself, I don't know, it doesn't feel ethical. So that's why I think that the best thing I can possibly do is leave her right here below these cedar trees here in the cedar swamp and I'll let her get consumed by the wild in the wilderness which I don't know I feel like as far as ends go is it the worst way to think about it I feel so bad about this though it's very much my fault she was a very good chicken very sweet gave us a lot of eggs over a couple of years it's just a tough way to go I think another question that might pop up for folks is What's the point of having a dog that's supposed to protect birds if it's gonna attack your birds? And you have to recognize that this is one of the situations where what might be bad for the one could be good for the many. By having Abby, by having Toby on the farm, we keep our predators away and it keeps our bird fatality rates very low. Unfortunately, when you're training a new dog, this is the type of thing that can happen.
Abby, sit. Yes. Good girl. Sit. Stay. 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 Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Stay. Yes. Good girl. You're doing so good. Come. Yes. Abby, sit. Sit. Abby, sit. Huh? Abby, sit. Yes. Stay. 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 Yes. Now I really feel like I'm opening myself up with you guys and telling you about the death of Blanche the chicken and my mistake and what Abby did. And so I know there's a good chance I'm gonna get crushed in the comments here on a number of fronts. Number one, I killed my chicken. Number two, I'm an awful dog owner. Number three, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know, maybe those are all fair criticisms. But I guess I show this to people because I think there's some myths out there, particularly to livestock guardian dogs that I think are worth dispelling in even this little incident and what happened. I think myth number one is if you have a dog that kills a chicken, that dog is broken and is not right and is not fit for duty and you should just get rid of it. And I think that that's a huge mistake. I think that that is the worst way you can think about raising a livestock guardian dog. What you really need to do is recognize that, yes, that's a misstep. That's not the behavior you want. You need to look at what allowed that behavior to happen. So for example, in my situation, the fact that Abby was loose while a chicken was loose and all of those things were happening while they were unsupervised, that's why this happened. Not because Abby's a bad dog, it's because I screwed something up. I think myth number two out there that's worth talking about, and I don't want anybody to think I blame him, because like I said, this is definitely a myth, but there's a myth out there that Toby dog would have supervised her and he should have stopped the whole situation. I think you can even go out into social media and find clips of exactly that type of behavior happening. And that is true in some instances. And I have seen Toby show Abby right behavior and wrong behavior. So for example, we're out here in the pasture right now and you can see them playing and running around like crazy. If Abby tries to do that up there and tries to play with Toby up by the bird yard and like the bird houses and stuff, he actually puts a stop to it really quick. If Abby tries to chase the cats or play too aggressively with the cats, he will generally step in and change that behavior as well. Now, I would have hoped he would have stopped Abby from killing that chicken and maybe he actually broke up her ability to, to attack the chicken. But it all still went down the way it went down and I can't blame Toby for that. But I do think it's a good illustration for folks who are thinking that, you know, by having an older livestock guardian dog, that dog's gonna do all the training work with your pup. That's not the case. You as the owner still need to do a lot of work. So I know I still have a lot of work to do with my Abby girl. Here, girl. Come here. Come here. Yes, I love you. I love you unconditionally, puppy dog. And I'm gonna keep working with you. And just wait, eventually you're gonna be an amazing livestock guardian dog despite this setback. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, girl.